All right, I don't want to lose this head of steam. This is an amazing conversation we have going here, and it dovetails really quite beautifully into the topic that I came here today to t discuss with you guys, um, which I'm actually going to have a little difficulty with because this is a, apparently an extremely literate audience, and a lot of the things that I came here to say were just said in the last 15 minutes. Uh, so. Yeah, my name is Michael Garfield, and um, I'm, I'm a member of the Evolver community, and and I guess I got kind of one foot in and one foot out, but I do I do love what they're they're building here. Um, I went to school for evolutionary ecology as an undergraduate, and in graduate work, I studied an emergent field of, of transdisciplinary research called integral methodological pluralism which looks at combining um, in a synergistic way uh, the various modes that we have elaborated over the last several thousand years of human exploration. You know, art and science and philosophy, um, the humanities, systems theory, and using them as irreducible dimensions of the human experience to arrive at a, an exper a, a description and an, and an understanding of that experience that transcends any attempt to reduce all of it to the language of any one of those disciplines. Um, my interest in this was because I recognized that in the Natural History Museum at the University of Kansas where I used to do my work, there was a missing piece and in, in museums all over the, the world and, and biological research institutes all over the world, there's this missing piece in our understanding of the way that evolution works. And it is only in the last few years that we're starting to recognize that the role of mind, perception, language, culture, communication, uh, that these are themselves irreducible elements, or not even you know elements, these are irreducible uh, dimensions uh, in our story of the evolutionary process. Um, so this could go along a, a, a number of different ways, but because I only have half an hour and because we're going to have more time to discuss these things later when I'm on a panel with Daniel Pitchbeck and Mitch Mignano in just a little bit here, I'm going to try and just uh, pull as many pins on this as I can and just um, can I do a little bit of philosophical free jazz for you guys? And I want to start with you where I started as a senior in the evolutionary biology program with the work of a, a doctor named Martin Nowak, who was at the time at Princeton. He now works as the, the uh, head of the department, a new interdisciplinary department at Harvard called the Department of Mathematical Biology. And what Martin Nowak found uh, and has been has continued to elaborate through his work is a mathematical articulation for how it is that order the higher levels of order emerge from lower levels of order now okay we're all 21st century humans here and I think all of us can appreciate the fact that when we say higher and lower levels of order we're we're not discussing them in any kind of absolute term but we're discussing them relative to our own experience in a fractal cosmology where the transcendent is one horizon, and, you know, the macrocosm is on one end and the microcosm is on the other end, and these are poles of the human experience, and these are not, you know, just like you can never actually make it to the horizon, you know, we're never actually going to become God, because by the time we do, then we have a new God, you know, but, so, wow, everything got kind of quiet, where, where am I? But, um, so what Martin Nowak was really interested in at the time that I was first discovering his research was the emergence of human syntactic language. And this is something that can't really be studied by the fossil record, which was really frustrating to me because at the time I was trying to do my work as a paleontologist. And there's something about getting your hands in the dust that I'm sure you can all appreciate as kind of a, a spiritual experience. But it's not the only way through which our world can be understood. And Noack took at it a mathematical approach to it, uh, kind of following the work of this 
this uh, chemist, Ilya Prigogine. He won the Nobel Prize for Chemistry in 1973 with the, the introduction of the, the idea of d dissipative structures. And a dissipative structure is something that emerges in a system when enough energy moves through the system that it, it has to crystallize in order to more effectively distribute the flow of that energy. A really perfect and kind of fundamental example would be the whirlpool in an eddy in a creek. There's this relationship between the flow of the current and the contours of the riverbed that create these whirlpools and the water moving through them is constantly changing. It's never the same material object and yet it has this persistent pattern. And so Prigogine provided for all of us a common language by which we can discuss emergent systems like a living organism or a, a city or a, a nation or a planetary ecology. And he provided a way for us to look at them all as different levels or different scales of the same process. So Martin Nowak asked, what is it about dissipative structures that occasionally they move from one level of complexity to a new level of complexity. You know, I mean, if we put more heat into a fire, it to, at least to us, it doesn't seem like it becomes some sort of super fire. It just burns faster, you know? So why is it that certain systems under certain kinds of pressure lead to these new and higher orders? And uh, what he found was that really that there is even though he was a mathematician that he found, and he was describing it in a mathematical language, uh, his, his work uh, focused on how ultimately it has to do with, in terms of the, the emergence of human syntax, it had to do with the complexity of our cultural environment. It had to do with the, the number of relevant ideas that we had to discuss as we moved you know, down out of the trees and into the plains and developed these tight-knit social bands and suddenly our ability to communicate with one another became ever more important. You know, if you look at uh, Gibbons and other primitive primates, there's only a few really relevant calls that they will make. They'll say, you know, uh, there's an eagle or there's a jaguar, you know, and, and that's, uh, or you know, or, oh, hey, but that's really like about it. And what happens is that when when you add additional dimensions of cultural complexity, um, which themselves are, uh, th this happens as an adaptive response to uh, movement into a more complex ecosystem, be it more species or more members of the same species, uh, then you have more things that you, you have more things to talk about, you have more things that you need to talk about in order to effectively participate. And so there came a point in the evolution of human language when the memory required to, re to remember all of the relevant words um, became too great. And it actually became easier for us to remember fewer words with just a few rules for how to combine those words to arrive at a multiplicative rather than an additive language. So the syntax is something that crystallizes, apparently, out of the, the pressure um, of this increasing demand for communication. And that increasing demand reaches a point at which everything starts to break down. Uh, Mitch, who's gonna be speaking in, in just a little bit here, uh, studied under William Irwin Thompson, and, and William Irwin Thompson uh, put it very beautifully when he said that evil is the enunciation of the next highest level of order. He, he looked at the emerging neo-tribal world cultures and he, you know, he said that uh, it appears to be very much about noise and, and pollution and craziness, you know, punk culture and all of this stuff where people are just raging out. But when you zoom out far enough to look at the human species in kind of a petri dish mode, what we actually see is the same kind of thing uh, when a, a, any, any population, genetic or memetic or, or whatever the, the unit that's being selected upon here, uh, goes through this explosive radiation